Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Jake Orlowitz. I'm user Okasi. Uh, welcome to Introducing the Citation Watchlist. I want to introduce the main speaker today. Uh, this is James Hare, user Hare J. He is the brilliant developer behind Citation Watchlist. I am kind of the product guy and naive user. And uh, so he makes it so I can use it. And then so hopefully you can all use it. And James is going to be talking about how we made the tool, why we made the tool. And then we're going to give a live demo, uh, which is extremely risky in the world of public speaking. And hopefully it will work. And then we'll take questions and hopefully get feedback from you about what you like, don't like, want, need in a tool like this. So here's James. Good morning. Um, I am James Hare. I am the developer of the Citation Watchlist tool, which is a user script, a sort of a user add-on for Wikipedia to enhance recent changes, watch lists, and page histories, so that when you view those pages, you get, pre you get previews, indicators, about what sort of sources might be cited on those pages. And so the citation watch list mainly works by scanning revision entries that appear on pages and highlighting the unreliable sources that appear. It adds them to watch lists, it adds them to recent changes, and it adds them to page histories. So basically, anywhere where you might find a list of revisions to a Wikipedia article, to one article or many articles, and when a source appears on a, in a revision that matches on one of our lists, one of three indicators can appear, and I will explain what these indicators are, but they include warn, caution, and inspect. So with the citation watch list, our goal is that we want to be able to monitor articles for the addition of, source, of certain sources. But there are so many edits constantly being made to even English Wikipedia, multiple edits per second. And manually screening each of those revisions for certain URLs or another would be very labor intensive. And if your, if your role on Wikipedia is to weed out bad sources, you want tools that let you do it as quickly and efficiently as possible. And so by giving clear visual indicators as to, what's, as to what's going on in that page, it makes that process more efficient. And because it is built as a user script, built in Wikipedia's interface, you don't have to go somewhere else, you don't have to use some other tool, you don't have to register an account somewhere else. You're doing this on Wikipedia using interfaces and tools you're already using. So when, so when you register a domain name in our, in our lists, um, you can assign one of three statuses to it. And the idea is that there are different categories of warning of alertness. So for example, the highest level is warn. And if we're giving a warning, then that means there is substantial consensus within the community that the source is probably not a reliable one. So if something appears with the red exclamation point, you can have pretty strong reason to believe that it's not considered a reliable source by the Wikipedia community. Caution is a sort of intermediary level where something could be perhaps not officially designated as an unreliable source, but something where there is significant controversy. And many of these, many of the uh, domain names that correspond to caution come from the perennial sources list on Wikipedia, which is the sort of hall of fame of source debates of, you know, is this source reliable? Is this other source reliable? If something achieves no consensus on perennial sources, it means it's been debated and debated and debated, and they haven't come to a, a solid conclusion. So we sort of say caution to say some people are concerned, or you should take a closer look. And then inspect is the third and it's more of a neutral category. If, if something appears as inspect, we're not necessarily saying it's an unreliable source or a heavily debated source, but rather it's something where you should take a closer look to make sure that it is um, a source that could be cited in that article. And this is good if you want to include lists that aren't necessarily reflective of Wikipedia's consensus, but perhaps your own point of view or maybe not even unreliable sources necessarily, but just um, links to something like doi.org or archive.org where 
you don't know, those are just containers for other things. You don't necessarily know what is being linked to on doi.org or archive.org. And so that's where inspect would come in handy. So with lists, the way lists work is that we have a wiki page listing the different lists, and then on each list it is sections, and then a bullet point, and then a domain name. So if you know how to edit a wiki page, if you know how to add a bullet point to a bulleted list, and then save the page, then you know how to add domain names to this list. So citation watch list screens against these lists. And the default list we have is the perennial sources list, although at the moment we have additional lists as well, and you cannot yet turn lists on and off. And so you'll have, you'll have perennial sources list, you'll have the deprecated sources list, and we've brought in some additional sources as well, such as um, from Sight Unseen, which is a very similar project. Um, and in addition to the pre-existing lists, you can add new lists as well. All you really have to do is just create a page that is formatted correctly. You can look at, a, at the others and just copy that. It's very straightforward. Once you create a page and add it to the list of lists, then it will just work, or it should at least. And in the future, we would like to make this more collaborative, You know, be able to say have different people provide their perspectives on what is considered a reliable or unreliable source, because the only way we really know for sure is by actually having this conversation. And if and we really only have this conversation about the ones that are debated over and over again, and that's really a small fraction of the sources cited on Wikipedia. So surfacing this information about what people, different people, different groups consider reliable or unreliable sources, I think will bring a lot of insight. So, there, so at the moment, we have a working prototype deployed on English Wikipedia. It works today. There are still bugs. A um, few things we want to address in the near future, false negatives. That is the situation where a, an unreliable source appears in a, in, in, in a revision, not supposed to appear, appear in revision, and it does not cause an indicator. So you, have, you don't get an indication that that source is being added. That's a false negative. We would like to address those. Uh, the UI, the UI at the moment is very basic. The goal was to not add so much interface as it was to just progressively augment Wikipedia's existing interface. And over time, we hope to add a little bit more of a user interface so that you, know, you could adjust settings, tweak it just as you like, because you know, different people are assessing sources from different perspectives, right? Some might be looking to see, oh, are you citing the opinion section rather than the news section? Other people are interested in, are you citing spurious scientific journals? And so being able to fine tune the user experience for different use cases is something we would like to work on as well. We, of course, always want to make the tool faster. Slow, if it's slow, you're not gonna use it. List development, actually finding these lists and integrating them into the tool. Um, and um, enhanced tool tips. So right now, it's very basic. If, if you hover over one of the indicators, you get you know, a, a normal like browser tool tip that just gives you the domain names. We would like to make that a little fancier, more like a Wikipedia pop-up, like when you hover over a link and you get that preview, we like something like that for citation watch list as well. So this is the fun part. I get to actually show this to you now. Let's clap for a live demo. <laughs> nothing, nothing strikes fear into the heart of a developer than a live demo. This is not pre-planned. We did test it this morning. It worked once. According to the Murphy's Law of Software Development, it will not work now. It's the demo effect, says Max. And the come sit. <clears throat> While Max is getting set up, I'll just mention he said Sight Unseen. Sight Unseen is a cool tool that works, uh, developed by Kevin Peyravi. And unlike the Citation Watch List, which works on page histories, watch lists, and recent changes, Sight Unseen works on the article in the references section and adds a variety of metadata there. So we're uh, complementary tools uh, and trying to provide indicators all over the Wikipedia ecosystem. So uh, we're at uh, the citation watch list documentation page. The shortcut for this is WP watch site, not site watch, which is a different page. 
And uh, it's a little hard to see, but there are setup instructions here. Setting up a user script is very simple, and uh, you can do it. You can even do it right now and see if this works for you. But uh, we're going to go from here to, I believe, uh, a recent changes feed that is it's kind of a it's kind of a softball, frankly. It's a list of all recent changes that are tagged with a deprecated source. So we know that all of these should hit an indicator. So it's a good way to start. And if anything doesn't hit an indicator, it's actually a sign that we haven't figured out that false negative yet. Thank you. So I figured I'd show you a bit behind the scenes first. Uh, if you could see this screenshot, you can get a, a bit of a taste of what the experience is like. You see the indicator here. You see the tooltip warning. This is a link to YouTube.com in this revision. And so what are the lists they're drawing from? First, we want to show you the list of lists. You know, Wikipedia loves their lists of lists. Um, and so each of these is an individual list that feeds into the tool. So we have deprecated sources. We have predatory open access journals, uh, the perennial sources, and just all of the Wikimedia wikis, as well as all of the excellent curation work uh, Kevin Bayravi did for Site Unseen. We've incorporated that into the tool as well. And if you actually open one of these pages, take a look at this. There are section headers, there is a bulleted list, and then you add the bullet, you add the domain name, you save the page. That's how it works. That's if it. You, There's no sophisticated, complicated back end you have to fiddle with. Yes. The goal was very much to have something that was directly integrated into Wikipedia. So, so let's try this out. Here is the recent changes page with the deprecated sources hashtag filter on. And in a few moments, you will see the page fill up with indicators. And as you can see, since we're on the deprecated sources list, we love using this page because we know we will always get matches. But I will make this a little bigger if you can't see. You can see next to each revision, there is an indicator, um, mostly exclamation points, because this is the deprecated sources feed. And so naturally, it will match with those. Um, if you hover over one of these, you could see warning, crunchbase.com. Crunchbase is user-generated content. User-generated content is generally not considered reliable. And so if you ever wondered, yes, Wikipedia considers Wikipedia to be an unreliable source. James, can you go to the 0027 that has three indicators on it of different levels? Oh, yes. So, um, so here you have, yeah, sometimes you get all three in one, and that's a nice treat. Uh, here you can see we link to aa.com.tr, Al Mayadeen, uh, Global Security, and YouTube. Um, those are not considered. A buffet of unreliability. Yep. Um, a caution, and as well as inspect. Uh, sometimes things show up in multiple of these. Uh, they're supposed to be sort of a precedent thing where if if something is both warn and inspect, then warn takes precedence. This is something we hope to work on soon. But if you then go, so here's another one, um, warning, wikipedia.org, you could then go, here's another one, and another one. So if you actually then go into this diff, you can actually inspect the edits. It's like, OK, we have a sense Wikipedia is being cited, and is it being cited? Look, Hungarian Wikipedia is being cited. And I probably wouldn't have been any wiser to that unless I had an indicator point that out to me in a sea of potential noise. And so now I want to show you how the experience carries over from recent changes to the page history. So once you see a page and you see one unreliable source show up in a diff, you can then do a deeper dive if you want and say, OK, let's look at this page. Let's look at the history. Let's do a refresh, James. Mm -hmm. All right. Here is another preloaded example we had. This is another page that showed up in our recent changes feed. And we decided, OK, this showed up, warning LinkedIn.com. And sure enough, LinkedIn is being linked to. But you know, he had, he, his edit summary is just added more information. 
how would I have known just from looking that from that he was going to link to LinkedIn? And so you could then say, okay, are there more edits like this where unreliable edits, unreliable sources are being added? And cursory glance so far is hopefully not. James, this is a live question. I actually don't know the answer to this, but if we were to go to that offending users contribs, would we get results? I don't think I have it set up for user contributions. I actually haven't tested that. This may be a feature we want to add. Yeah. This is very much a tool in development, mm -hmm. and um, we want to hear very honestly what would make you use it. Um, James, can we go back to depths? Sure. And uh, very transparently, I want to actually ask you to, to look at a false negative mm -hmm. and show some of the examples where we're not matching. Um, unlike uh, a tool like Sight Unseen, which I'm going to um, uh, Sight Unseen explain for a second, or there are other, Novum, Novum has a great tool, uh, Headbomb has a great tool. There's multiple of these tools that work on the articles. I don't want to say it's easy to parse an article, but we're doing it differently than just reading the page. We're actually parsing a diff. And there's five types of diff, and we have to hit the API, and then we have to parse the citation that comes up. And so certain, certain things are harder to flag than others. So I want to show an example of a false negative. And you know, what we're trying to do, of course, is show indicators on more and more and more pages and miss fewer and fewer and fewer links without including any false positive, any false positives. So let's look at a false negative. If you go to depths, James, the um, recent changes. Are we getting a... Uh... One thing that happens sometimes is that the Wikimedia REST API imposes hard rate limits. And if you reach those rate limits, you're done. <laughs> and there is no way around this. Uh, do you want to check the console? Are we, are we there? Um, if anyone knows what inspect is in Polish. <laughs> the last one, thank you. Uh, We're doing a live demo in Polish. Is 429, that, we've hit rate limiting. OK, we've hit the rate limit. That is the technical end of our demo. Um, this, is, this is another problem with the, uh, or challenge with the tool, is because it uses the API and because some people have uh, hundreds of pages that they view on their watch list, the Wikimedia Foundation servers are nervous about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hits. So because we don't have just the page, we have to hit the API to get this, the diff. Uh, this is also a challenge. And we're trying to fail gracefully, uh, kind of warn or preempt uh, people from hitting a hard limit, because it does take some time to Unfo reset. Unfortunately, in this case, I think we actually did hit the hard limit. Oh, darn it. Um, so this would be a good time to transition to uh, questions, including opinions, thoughts, um, features and anything that you would, uh, uh, anything that impresses you about this is of course welcome. But most importantly, I guess I'm really wanting to know what would this be useful in your workflow, and what would make it wor useful in your workflow or more useful. Philip. Oh, sorry. And we have seven uh, minutes just to give a sense of time. This is a really interesting tool. Um, one suggestion maybe to have an indicator where everything seems fine. Um, a green check mark might be a little too much maybe because we're not sure probably. Mm -hmm. um, but something indicating that you know it hasn't failed. It, it, it did check, but it didn't turn ah, out. Ah, so you can tell the difference between a false yeah, negative and, and, a and just a, a fail. Okay, yeah. yes, but that is interesting. Um, it it would be a trade off. Obviously, it would provide some visual clutter, if you will, because most edits don't have uh, an right. unreliable source. But maybe we could do something small, like just a uh, a dot. Or my a, my idea, honestly, was to just have a status indicator up top. Just a little box that says, you know, is it still working? Is it done running? 
know, something that gives a little more indication. Like a cogwheel or something. That's mm -hmm. good for the whole tool, but in, yeah. in Philip's case, he's talking, I believe, about an individual diff to say, we check this diff and we are confident that it does not, that it didn't fail. We don't have a false positive here, a false negative, excuse me. Um, that's a great idea. Or temporary check mark. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some kind of like we looked and we think it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, great idea. Uh, another question. Can you pass the mic, please? Yeah, one thing I think would also be useful would be something that maybe you could add to a source, maybe in the citation template. I know this would take a little work. That would basically, if, you're, if you find yourself in a position where you have to use an otherwise unreliable source, like somebody notable talking about themselves in the Daily Mail, this has sure. happened. And uh, this would let the bot, this would let uh, the watch list, the script, know that you have a good reason for using this otherwise unreliable Bad source tool. used on purpose. Yes. Um, two things. First of all, um, usage discretion is not just advised, user discretion is required. There is absolutely no automatic action that can follow from a red, even the, the highest level of concern would never justify automatically reverting that edit without looking at the diff. So that is implicit in using the tool. And the second thing I want to say is that this tool would not exist at all without Hacks Hackers. This is Jenny from Hacks Hackers. Hacks Hackers is a brilliant organization that works at the intersection of news and technology, which is right where this tool sits. Hacks Hackers is heavily involved with Wikicred, which is a suite of tools working on citations and reliability, including Sight Unseen and some other things that are developing. And um, let's clap it, clap it up for Wikicred and Jenny for, 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 for funding this effort and making it possible. Um, the foundation cares about citations. I know they do. They're working on things. But some things are best prototyped and developed from the community. And there has, you know, it's, it's invaluable to have people in the world of journalism and technology caring about Wikipedia in the same way that we care about Wikipedia. Um, and it empowers us to build these tools and to have the time to build these tools and test them. And uh, as simple as this script is, it has taken six months to get even here. And we probably need another six months before it's actually fully usable. And then people need to adopt it. And so there's a lot of investment that goes into this. Let's take another question. Peter? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I use um, head bomb script for highlighting unreliable sources in, in content. But yes. yeah, this looks really cool for being able to see it in, in changes as well. So I'm excited to try it out. Um, as you mentioned, there's a few tools. There's also the foundation's edit check tool, which I think is going to try and highlight people trying to add unreliable sources. Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought edit check was going to happen for editors at the att when they attempt yeah. to make an edit yes but it's, it's going to warn them it's still checking like yes. trying to rate sources i wonder if it's worth having a like a collaborating and building a more centralized list rather than like head bombs maintaining their yes. own list you're maintaining a list i would love the foundation to fund this tool yes. yeah yes. not just um, fund it but deploy it yes. internally make it an actual yes. production system yes. and not yes. something from the outside trying to yes user scripts are never going to be what broadly adopted, uh, I mean, users, even knowing that there is a common.js page or a user page or having a login for that matter. But there, there are a number of filters on the watch list, very and robust filters. You can also filter by tags, like the deprecated source tag is, a, is available in the watch list filter. It would be relatively trivial to integrate this into the existing watch list technology, but we have to show that there's demand and you know a use case for it. This is where the, the backup technology grants are permanently on hold, is sort of a little bit of a block there. Just, just for noise, yeah, there are no tech grants to the community at the moment, and that's for complicated reasons, but uh, it's, it, it's not good. Um, sorry, second question and quick feature suggestion. I yes. don't know if any of these tools have it, and I'm sure it's very difficult. But is it possible to rate sources by date? Because, for example, like CNET on the list of sources, like it was reliable before 2020. Yes. After 2022, yes. it's like AI slop. So. Yes. So uh, it's not it's not easy. Um, 
uh, that's why like something like CNET would be would get the caution indicator. You'd have to go in and look at the date, grabbing the date met, grabbing the date metadata, and then having that structured is something that having a centralized reliable sources list or perennial sources list with metadata and machine readability is something we need because then you can say if before okay if between bad if after really bad you know so it's a great suggestion i think we'll we'll make note of it it's not trivial it might work in like the next generation of this which will have a completely different it will work in a completely different way, and at that point, I think having date sensitivity might be an option. Yeah. Let's take one more question if there is one, and then we're out of time. If not, we can just wrap up, and I really appreciate everyone sharing their thoughts. I encourage you, uh, James, can you advance to the instruction? Um, or I can do it. Wait. Yeah, so um, can we? It's on the back, but um, setup instruction is so trivial. Just go to WP Watch Site, and um, all you have to do is copy one line, go to your common.js page, which is linked, and install it, and then it'll work, and you can try it. We need to see, does this work on Chromebooks? Does it work if you're running a different browser? Does it work if you have ad blockers on? So the more testers we have, the better. The more people who use this, the better the case we can make to the foundation that this is worth further investment and centralization. Thank you, James. Thank you, everyone.